that's okay. Uh, what software skills are needed in order to be successful as a graphic designer? I think you have to understand Photoshop. You have to understand, in, you have to understand Photoshop. You have to understand InDesign, Illustrator, a little bit of Quark maybe, not as much anymore. It seems like people are using InDesign more. Um, I think if you have understanding of HTML and Flash, the basic program, I think that's important as well. What? What? Soft, soft, software. Software skills? Yes. Um, uh, well, I think, once again, software is one of those things that, you know, processes come and go as well. Um, you know, in design, it, you, you, it's, there's foundational stuff, obviously, you want to learn, you know, the basic programs, Illustrator, InDesign, Quark, whatever the, you know, uh, whether you're doing page layout or image adjustment or whatever, there's, there's certain similarities, obviously, in the interfaces and the, um, but it goes back to, uh, to critical thinking, I think, as well. Um, I think, you know, to me, software skills are as much about being able to sit down and figure out an interface, you know, as they are about how you, you know, what, what kind of textbook solution you, you know. Uh, because in different workflows, um, there's different efficiencies that you kind of have to learn. If you're working with a whole bunch of people, you know, let's, let's throw out an example here. If you're, if you're uh, working in Quark Express and you're building a, um, uh, in, a, in a print workflow and you're, you're building a design that's, you know, 24 pages long and it's got 60 zillion different, you know, text boxes and style sheets and everything else set up in there that are, you know, very kind of complex piece. And you're working in a workflow where other people at some point are going to have to pick up that document and, and use it. You know, it gets back to flexibility. You want to be able to build that file in a way that's going to be efficient and intuitive for someone else to pick it up and work with that file. Or, you know, if you're working in you know, some because there's a ton of ways with most software packages that you can achieve the same result just using different techniques or whether you're, you know, how you manipulate it. So knowing, being able to adapt the way you work in different software packages to the workflow at hand, you know, and understanding the, the process of how it gets and all the hands that have to touch it from the start to the finish is, is, has all an effect on how you would approach building that file. Yeah, I think there's the basics, um, you know, kind of like the Creative Suite stuff, um, you know, which now I guess includes, you know, all the interactive stuff along with it. Um, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have some audio, you know, experience, you know, whether it be like a garage band type thing, um, you know, or working with like quick, quick time with audio, that type of stuff. Um, uh, you know, video, whether it's like a Final Cut um, or even iMovie, you know, I mean, we use all that stuff, you know, all the time. So I think it's just as, as much as you can learn to know everything from flight check to your, you know, for your files all the way through. So, um, you know, as far as software goes, yeah. Uh. Man, you know, you need you need more than software skills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. it, it, you, you need to yeah. know the the basics, yeah. and the basics would be, um, you know, line art manipulation, photo manipulation, and layout software. Which the the accepted technology is Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign right now. For most um, places. In a way, it is yeah. changing from the Quark thing. So. Yeah, some places still, use, a lot of places actually still use Quark. And Quark was the, you know, gold standard for a long time, but InDesign is just so much easier to use um, and easier to learn, too, I think. But if you're serious about design as a career, it's good to know Quark, because a lot of places still use it and it's more difficult it's not like you can just pick it up like InDesign you can just pick up but Quark you really have to make an effort to learn and it's true man I mean like like with a conference for example you know I was telling him that I went to a conference in New York in InDesign dude I was big Quark guy you know like I always said Quark was better I went to this conference and it's amazing man I mean what you can do and now with CS3 I mean it's I mean, it's, it's way, way better, way, way better. So even even just the way, I mean, like, you know, the way you set up paragraphs, you know, you, you type a line in Quark and you type it in InDesign and you put it next to each other, 
and the kerning and everything of letters is better in InDesign than in Quark because of the way the program is and it's program or whatever. You know, you have optical kerning and all that stuff. And in Quark, you look at it and the letters are, you know, the kerning is, is worse and stuff. So the same paragraphs. Right. So, but I, but I think, yeah, I mean, you, you should know, you know, at least you know your InDesign, Photoshop, you know, whatever, Illustrator. And I mean, I work at a place that they, they use, you know, extra software to do you know, the ads, I mean, so but at least you should know that. And, and again, you know, you should know a little bit of the web even, you know, have a basic knowledge. If it's not your thing, you know, but have a basic knowledge of it. So. Excellent. Um, I think with graphic design, the basics, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, um, InDesign, I think, um, if for that's mainly for print for interactive I think it's uh, definitely flash Dreamweaver and um, some some outside extra coding things like CSS if you can learn some actual programming languages like PHP or ASP cold fusion even that's something that just helps make you more marketable to people what what software skills? Software? Yes. Um, oh, okay. I, I interpreted that question different because it says what soft skills? Yeah, they wrote. I, I changed the question back. I mean, I wrote it down. That's how that's how they gave it to me. And when I looked at them, like soft. But for me, I'm like I, I, reading soft skills to me sounds weird. So I just. But that's what they gave me. So, but okay, that's what they were. That's what they were talking oh, okay, about. Okay. Yeah. I kind of the way I interpreted the question, and you can tell me, do whatever you want to do, obviously with it. <laughs> sure. Um, was more what skills that aren't software skills because I think for the most part we know there's a standard set of programs you know there's InDesign there's Quark there's Illustrator there's Photoshop there's Flash there's Dream you know there's all of these we can run down the list I think that's like the basic 101 design people know what programs are you know consistently being used but um, I interpret it as soft skills as other skills that you would need um, and uh, and I came up with Primarily two, one being adaptability, because you have never been pulled in so many directions as you will be as a designer. Um, of course, it depends on what kind of company you work for and how big your team is, but I've worked for companies where I'm the sole designer to companies where I'm a team, you know, one of a team of ten. And um, I've never noticed it to not be there. Some it's more evident than others, but you'll be focused on one project trying to go in this direction then somebody's going to interrupt you because there's this rush job and you have to get to this and you have to totally shift gears and then somebody else oh can you just throw this logo on this disc right there it'll only take you a second and then by the way the scope of this project has changed and the budget on that has changed so you just constantly have to be able to go from one thing to the other and you just have to ro roll with it because if you fight it you're going to just be a miserable person <laughs> so so um Adaptability, I definitely think, is uh, a key factor, and um, passion for what you do, because what we do is hard work. I mean, it's fun. Sometimes I stop in the middle of my day, and I'm like, this is really actually pretty cool what we do. We get paid to do this. Then other times of the day, I'm pulling out my hair because it's just so chaotic. But um, you know, ultimately, I think if you have a passion for, for design, you um, constantly you know, keep up with what the trends are and what the new programs can let you do and just have a thirst for knowledge for it, for your love of design, that um, although it may be challenging, at the end it's very rewarding. Um, in order to be 